what does this highway sign mean to you? I've seen that sign before on the highway, but I have no idea what it means. I think I have seen this sign on a rainy day, and it means that the road is slippery. I think it means caution of one nature or another. I believe that means there's a speed zone coming up. That sign is to warn drivers of a construction area. The orange and black sign conveys warning and guidance and denotes a work zone. A series of these signs is normally displayed in advance of a work zone as warning that the road ahead is being worked on. Maintenance and reconstruction of our highways and streets occurs every day. Work reaches highest intensity in summer months when many are driving over unfamiliar highways. Highway work zones are upsetting because they may delay our travel and expose us to potentially hazardous situations such as workers, equipment, and excavations in or near the roadway. The Federal Highway Administration reports nearly 800 work zone fatalities per year. Work zones can also be dangerous for the highway worker. National estimates are that as many as 100 highway workers are killed each year. Since conditions change rapidly, the traffic controls must be changed frequently to reflect current traffic conditions. The objectives of this videotape are to help you understand the purpose of the devices used in highway work zones and to provide tips to enable you to safely drive through the areas where work is being done. Heed signs and other traffic controls, but also be alert to unexpected situations or even incorrect signing. There is a class of traffic control devices for temporary work zone situations. These devices include the orange and black signs mentioned earlier, cones, drums, barricades, arrow panels, pavement markings, and flaggers. Flaggers are used to stop, slow, and guide traffic in work zones. These warning signs indicate a flagging operation. On two-lane roads, flaggers are most often used to alternate traffic through a work zone with one lane. Be alert to a line of stopped cars. If you're stopped, turn on your four-way flashers to alert other cars to the stopped condition. On multi-lane roads, flaggers will most often be slowing traffic near workers. They may also stop traffic to allow construction vehicles to enter or leave the work site. Channelizing devices such as cones, drums, vertical panels, and barricades are used to warn drivers of the work activity, separate work from traffic, and guide drivers safely past the work. They are also used to separate opposing directions of travel Stripes on barricades slope downward toward the side where traffic is to pass. Pavement markings may be temporarily altered or obliterated during work zone operations. Temporary markings will normally be installed in long-term work of several days duration. For short-term work of 1 to 12 hours, Existing pavement markings may be unaltered and channelizing devices used to delineate the proper path to follow. Advanced warning arrow panels are also normally used near the transition area to guide traffic into the open lane. They may be stationary or used on moving vehicles. The arrow panel may display a large arrow that flashes on and off or a set of three chevrons that build across the panel. Either of these denotes a closed lane and points in the direction the traffic should merge into the open lane. Aero panels also display either of these two caution modes to denote work that is on the shoulder or roadside. Be alert, but do not change lanes. Other devices, like this message sign, are used to give you valuable information to guide you through the work zone. Concrete barriers in work zones protect workers, prevent vehicles from driving into excavations, or serve as temporary bridge rails. The most common barrier used is called safety-shaped and is designed to minimize injury when struck at low angles. 
highway agencies and construction contractors have a legal and moral obligation to keep the roadway as safe as possible while work is underway. Drivers also have a responsibility to show extra care where workers and equipment must operate close to traffic. These driving tips will help you be prepared for the most common situations you will encounter in work zones. First of all, avoid major projects if an alternate route is available. Your local auto club can help minimize your exposure to major projects for long vacation drives. Obtain a list of current projects underway. When driving through a work zone, you may encounter workers, equipment, or devices in the road, or even something completely unexpected. These work zone features linked with the element of surprise can quickly lead to unfortunate results. The most common type of work zone involves a lane closure. These necessary bottlenecks have two lanes of traffic merging into one lane. Advanced signs will state right or left lane closed. You may also see a lane transition sign followed by an arrow panel. The advance information gives you time to make a safe merge. Don't wait until the last second when it may be harder to find a gap in the open lane. An early merge enables the entire group of traffic to make it through the bottleneck much quicker. Be alert for traffic slowing or stopping in front of you. If you are already in the open lane, leave gaps so that others can merge. When it is not practical to close a lane, it may be shifted or curved around the work. The lane shift will be marked with this sign. If more than one lane is being shifted, this sign may depict the number of lanes. Stay in your lane through the lane shift area, even though the lane may be shifted onto a shoulder or other rough surface. Narrow lanes are common in work zones. Slower speeds are necessary for safe driving in these areas. Because of the limited width of roadway available, many vehicles may drive over the lane line. Large vehicles are especially prone to stray into your lane. Give as much room as possible, but try not to drive side by side with them. Drop-offs are road sections with different elevations that are created when lanes are resurfaced or the shoulder is excavated. A drop-off as low as two inches can cause loss of control if you react improperly. Avoid the impulse to immediately steer your vehicle back onto the pavement. If your wheels are scrubbing or rubbing against the drop-off edge, you will have to oversteer to remount the drop-off. Once back on the pavement, your vehicle is likely to slingshot across the roadway, perhaps into oncoming traffic. Instead, when your wheels go into a drop-off, slow down and steer one or two feet away from the drop-off edge. Then, when you re-steer into the edge, you should easily remount the drop-off. More highway work is being done at night to avoid peak traffic periods. Work zone features may be difficult to see, and glare from opposing motorists or floodlights may reduce your vision. Signs, channelizing devices, and pavement markings are designed to delineate your path. So don't drive into areas where you can't see the road surface. It may be necessary to use your high beams to see the correct path or objects on your left, such as concrete barrier. There are two types of speed limit signs used in work zones. This orange and black speed sign is an advisory speed plate which indicates the maximum recommended speed in the area where it's posted. 
The second type is a regulatory speed limit sign. It specifies the legal speed limit and can be used to ticket you for speeding in the work zone. Many states have increased enforcement patrols as a way of reducing accidents. Some have even legislated double fines for speeding in work zones. Work zone signing and speed limits may have been abused in the past by posting unnecessarily low limits or by keeping the signs up when work was not underway. However, today's highway workers are doing a much better job of keeping traffic controls current and relevant. Observe the speed limit, and when you see workers or machinery close to the traveled lanes, give them a break for their safety and yours. While some accidents in work zones are probably unavoidable, you can help make our roads much safer by being alert when you see the orange and black work zone signs. Be patient when delayed and consider other drivers and the workers along the highway. Remember to pay attention to features of the work zone and to expect the unexpected. Soon, you'll be through the work zone and on your way again. <laughs>